I'm your host today. We've been talking about the one-year anniversary of the Snowden documents, uh, the beginning of the leaks. What do you think of it? Uh, what do you think of what the effect is going to be of that? And, of course, we're also talking about the release, the prisoner exchange that Obama did where he illegally released five Gitmo detainees without following the 30-day procedure. That's a very, very clear violation of the law. Are we going to just say, do that one more time, and I'm going to get seriously uh, serious about enforcing the law? I'm going to maybe impeach you, as Miss Lindsey Graham said. Or are we going to really see our politicians do something? Are they just going to score some cheap partisan points for the election, or are they going to stand for the rule of law finally? As George Will pointed out, uh, it was Nixon who said on the David Frost show, when the president does it, that means it's not illegal. Well, you know, that's what we're seeing all the time. From Obama, whether it's Obamacare just being amended at will by uh, our commander, our dictator in chief, or whether he's killing American citizens abroad, assassinating them with drones, with secret orders. That's what we see happening. So we're taking your calls on that, but I want to tell you first that this half hour of the Alex Jones Show is brought to you by one of our new products, Survival Shield X2. It's much stronger than regular survival shield through a unique manufacturing process that utilizes iodine sources from deep within the earth. And tomorrow, we're going to bring you some pictures of what those look like. It's pretty amazing. It's a unique new process that uses a high purity grade of iodine from more than 7,000 feet below the earth's surface, below the radiation Fukushima wave. It's extracted from an ancient salt solution that yields a powerful and uncontaminated 650 micrograms of iodine per single drop. It's tested with radiation readings at the labs to ensure freedom from Fukushima radiation. Developed proprietary technology to create nascent iodine by using our key thermodynamic pressure-sensitive high-energy sound pulse nano emulsion technology. And we're going to be at the factory tomorrow to give you a shot of what that mouthful looks like. <laughs> we should come up with some kind of an acronym for that, you know, just like uh, when they were killing the premature babies, they called it support, you know, but actually this is something that you need to see. This is a great source of a vital nutrient that you need. You can get it at InfoWarsStore.com. The toll-free number for that is 888-253-3139. Again, that's 888-253-3139. 3139, that's Survival Shield X2, our new product here. Now, one of the other things that we hope that you will support us with is Prison Planet TV. We have the nightly news there. We have uh, all of Alex's documentaries going back are available for you to see, as well as up to 10 people that you share your password with, if you wish, to help wake them up. Now, every night we have great news and special reports from our people. And as one of the callers earlier mentioned, there was a connection between the release of Bergdahl and Michael Hastings. And, of course, our own Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, who now works on the nightly news, was in the platoon that Michael Hastings was embedded with. He was a commander of that platoon at the Staff Sergeant level. And got to know him very well, so he knows a great deal about this Bergdahl uh, situation here. And we got a report that he filed last night. I want you to get his analysis of the comments and the video as they had this prisoner exchange. Here's that report. And welcome to the Obama distraction. I'm sorry to interrupt your coverage of the VA scandal, but... People are starting to get tired of watching the Malaysian flight investigation. So the president's feelings are starting to get a little bit hurt due to the fact that his government-run health care plan is not working out too good. So without further ado, I bring to you the Obama distraction, Bo Bergdahl. Bergdahl claimed he was nabbed when he fell behind on patrol, but his fellow soldiers say he simply walked off post. The military devoted weeks to searching for him, and now some in his battalion are claiming that at least six soldiers were killed during those missions. All right, we're going to break down the video of the Bo Bergdahl release from the Taliban to American soldiers. As you can see, Bo sitting in the back of the Taliban vehicle. At this point, the Taliban guy telling him to not come back to Afghanistan. And I don't think he really means just him overall. I think he means it's a message to America, stay out. We don't want you here. Here we are, helicopter coming in. Taliban guys, RPGs on the mountain. But just remember, too, though, 
The government was saying when they found Bergdahl, he was in a very weakened state. Looks to me he's standing up on his own and he is walking away just fine. Notice that pat on the back from this op right here, making sure he doesn't have a vest on or anything like that. All right, he's walking up to the helicopter with these guys. Notice none of these guys are armed. The Taliban had the white flag up. Bo Bergdahl once again gets patted down, checked, make sure he's got no weapons or anything that's threatening. And they're going to put him in the helicopter and fly off. He was looking for someone who spoke English so he could talk to the Taliban. And when we heard that, it told us, okay, he's actively seeking out the Taliban. Over the next couple months, uh, all the attacks definitely were far more directed. Following his disappearance, IED started going off directly under the trucks. They were getting perfect hits every time. Their ambushes were very calculated, very methodical. Like, they knew what we were going to do. What you just heard Bo Bergdahl's former team leader say is, in fact, true. If you go to the WikiLeaks.org Afghan war files, you can actually read everything that happened that day, where they actually say that they found him actively seeking the Taliban. They heard chatter, and the Kuchi tribe picked him up asking for Taliban who spoke English. I mean, it's all right there. This is a big distraction from the VA but it is a story worth covering. All right, so if you're tired of the uh, mainstream media mass distraction, make sure you tune into InfoWars and also go to prisonplanet.tv. And don't forget, your username and password can be right, that's shared a with up to 10 report from Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs. And of course, he was in Afghanistan as well as Iraq, and he knew Michael Hastings very well. He'd been talking about Bergdahl before this ever happened. And, of course, uh, Chuck Hagel is putting out the story now that they had to get him because he was in a weakened state. Or Obama said, we saw an opportunity and we seized it. That's why we didn't follow the law. It was an emergency. I don't make any apologies for that. So I don't buy that. I don't know if you do. We've got uh, Michael in FEMA region number nine. You wanted to talk about this, Michael? Hey, what's up, man? Let me get you off speaker. Okay, yeah, please do. Hey, David. Hey. Hey, I got notes taken down. Snowden, what is, let me ask you a question. What's the metal that's the equivalent of the CMH that they give to civilians? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I've well, never been given a medal by my government. I don't know. <laughs> what, I, what I believe they should do is they should, Obama should pin that medal on Snowden's chest, and then they should hang Bergdahl because it's an act of high treason during a time of war, what they call war, and then impeach um, uh, Obama. That's right. And it is a striking contrast, isn't it, that they would uh, have so many soldiers killed for searching for a deserter, and then at the same time when we have someone reveal criminal actions of our government that they would come after him and say they want to put him in jail, they want to execute him. There's been a lot of calls even to execute Glenn Greenwald. Uh, we've seen over and over again on television. It's like, hey, this journalist. And we've seen Obama prosecute more people under the 1917 Espionage Act than all the other presidents combined. All the other presidents before Obama only invoked that act four times, and Obama in just five years has done it seven times against Pulitzer Prize winning journalists. I mean, he is trying to shut down the press and the public's right to know about anything. But it is a striking contrast, isn't it, the way uh, they have treated this deserter versus somebody who warned us about our government's illegal actions. I agree with you 100%, David. Um, try, try to do, have one of your guys look up what the name of that medal is that they give to uh, high-end civilians. It's, it's, it's just like the Congressional Medal of Honor, but that's what Snowden should receive. And one other thing I want to say, and I want to say it loud and clear, and I've said it before on the Alex Jones show, is that I've had friends say, you shouldn't say this online. You shouldn't say this on your Facebook. You shouldn't say this on, on your cell phone. I hope they're listening to me. That's what I got to say. My name is Michael, FEMA <laughs> Region 9. Thank you for your time, David Knight. Well, Michael, you're going to have to watch out for that list when they when Greenwald eventually releases it. See if your name is on the list of people they've been watching. Of course, they've been watching everybody, but uh, some people they take special interest in here because uh, it's political dissidents that they don't like. It's Tea Party members that they don't like. It's conservatives and libertarians and Ron Paul supporters and Chuck Baldwin supporters that they don't like. And they've made that very clear. And they are training to take over towns under martial law. 
We see it in their scenarios. We see it in their cities. As I walk through with Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs there in uh, uh, the Asymmetric Warfare Center in Virginia. And as part of that, leading up to that, we went back and looked at their own videos at their conferences where they were talking about this. And I, I found it very interesting that these people who were talking about the history of asymmetric warfare, what was working for them, what was not, and, and by the way, they've never won an asymmetric war. And they admitted that. But they also said the legitimacy of a government uh, can be measured by how much security forces they need to use in order to maintain stability. So I would say that by that yardstick, I would say that our own government believes that it is not acting legitimately because they are ramping up the security state in this country like nobody can imagine. Let's go to another caller, uh, Peter in Pennsylvania. You want to talk about propaganda? Go ahead, Peter. Talk to you, David Knight. Um, I got to admit, I like uh, Alex a little better on, the, on air because he's a little bit more of a showman than you, but you do a great job anyways. Thank you. Anyways, um, <laughs> I think you were very courageous with uh, Clyde and Bundy, and, um, you know, they race-baited them like they usually do. Oh, yeah. So, so those, it's just standard operating.